Hey Rodney, it's Marty Connell from Rolling Dice and Taking Names. And just like you had Pep on as a guest for your segment, I too would like to have a guest. I'd like to have my wife, Vanessa, come in. Hey Marty, what are you looking for? Looking well, I for? thought you were going to pop up from the table like Pep did. Oh, he's young and energetic. My knees creak. I understand that. So I have my wife on because she actually got into gaming through Dice. Through Dice at Gen Con. I got a... Uh, prize a game token and when I turned it in it was this set of Dungeons and Dragons dice mm. and oh hey look they match my nails today yeah, very cute but whenever I got them I just saw them and I immediately wanted to use them so I asked you what can I play with these what can we do and that was it that's how I started gaming yeah in fact at that same Gen Con all my sons got into dice too we went to the Chessex booth and everybody bought their own set of dice that we still use for a Pathfinder and other RPGs mm -hmm. in addition we got into War Machines so everybody had to buy their own faction dice we got into special dice such as this Braille D20 or this special 24 Four sided die, which represents 18 different dice from Game Science, and Game Science also sells specially balanced dice, which are supposed to roll very fairly. But we don't use dice just for games, do no, we? No. Well, I do like jewelry. Yes. I like jewelry. So I have here some uh, necklace and earring sets that I've gotten at different conventions, a pair of earrings that I made. Um, I really like my pewter ring. It looks like a, well, it is, dragon talons and the D20 is sitting down in there like a dragon egg. Uh, my camellia bracelet uh, is a little dressier and you found a D6 in Vegas. And this uh, D20 dice you found on Think Geek and gave it to me for Christmas this year. That's correct. Not only do we use it for jewelry and gaming, but we also use it as like decorations around the house. For example, we got this D20 rug that we have down in the yep. basement. Yep. And I like to put uh, dice just in votive cups around, very, very game related decorating. I love the bowl with the dice in the bottom and the water and the floating candle. Just a little romantic lining for Valentine gaming. Mm -hmm. Speaking of romantic, you actually gave me this D20 shirt for our 20th wedding I did. anniversary. I did. See, D20, 20th wedding oh, anniversary. Oh, I, I got it. Yeah, yeah, you got it? I got it. Well, I don't know. You just had a big birthday recently. That's or true. Or a birthday, not a big birthday. That's there true. Dice on your cake. Yes, there was. Dice on your cake. Um, you know what? I have also heard that some game companies and podcasters hmm. use the word dice in their names yes such as rolling dice dukes of dice dice hate me um seems like there's another one but i can't think of it right now hey while all the dice are out on the table why don't we just uh take a couple and why don't you roll dice and take the name of who's going to make supper tonight Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Play Table Talk Back. My name is Rodney Smith, and this is Pat McDonald. He's back, and with a little less metal, I notice. Yeah, I think the earring jingled around a little bit too it much. It was swinging. It was, it was going. It never free. stopped. Yeah, it sure was. But we had lots of jewelry in that last segment from Marty and Vanessa. Lots of cool dice stuff there. Thanks for sending that in, guys. That was really neat. Yeah, it was awesome. You more than made up for the lack of metal on Pep now. And we also got lots of uh, great written responses as well. Uh, let's dive into it. We have one here from J Juiced, Ju Juiced, Juiced? Jo jo House. Now. Oh, I think the J is Host. Host now. Host now. I just have to say this: every single dice is not right. It's every single die. Pep, I think that was. I think so. I think that was directed at you. Maybe a little. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Kabuki Kid writes: When the word dice is used for a single die, I want to die. Do you? This is just five pages of that, by the way. People oh, writing in about. You're kidding. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think it was mainly you making that uh, slip up of the t the grammar tongue. Yeah, it's it's funny too. I'm I'm usually pretty good with my grammar, yeah. and on top of it, I uh, you love dice. I love dice, so oh. you think I would pay more attention to it, but you know, oh, I had to teach you about it because that's the sort of thing I would do, and I've already been corrected on that multiple times by our viewers. So that's why I don't make that mistake anymore. Thank you, viewers, for helping me be gooder at speaking. Karen Corrigan writes. My daughter totally believes in the mystic power of rolling the dice. Even though you can let the computer roll in Golem Arcana, she absolutely insists that they physically roll the dice to achieve her goal. She doesn't trust the computer. I kind of like that. Yeah, me you too. You know, like the naturalist. You know, she wants to, like old school, wants to roll the dice. Yeah, don't let the apps do everything for us. Actually, that's, a, a, I think, a, a good topic for a future Table Talk episode would be apps in games, because we're seeing more of those... You know, integrated all the time, right? So I know I love these games where you have to use an app on my LG Rumor One. <laughs> yeah, you've got the best. <laughs> oh my goodness! Do you have to crank that up? Yeah, to, like, get well, to work? <laughs> yeah, it's it's like those old watches. You know, you gotta. <laughs> you've got an old phone, man. Old phone. Hello, Rodney. My name is Anthony, and this is. Wait, wait, come back. <laughs> Teenagers. Anyways. 
Thanks, Ronnie, for making this topic about dice because I love dice in my games. So I'm gonna quickly run down the list here. One, always re-roll no! when dice fly off the table. Number two. Here are some custom dice trays I have made. One is made out of an old cigar box I found. I simply just bought some felt from the hobby store and glued it down and it works great. Number three. Not a big fan of your single claw, double claw rolling technique that your friends do. There's just something about the dice needing to leave your hand for it to count. Number four. When rolling dice in critical situations to get to feel more lucky, I usually cut my hands like this and let her go. Number five. My favorite dice set that I currently own has to be the Arkham Horror beige colored uh, custom dice. They're just really nice looking and how could you not want to play that game without these dice? I own S82 states, so did anyone find out where Rodney found these awesome glass dice? <laughs> yes, in fact I did Ionis. <laughs> Why is Ionis so old? <laughs> well, I figured he was 82. <laughs> yeah, okay, maybe so. Oh, okay. <clears throat> well, actually, there's really good news on this particular question. Daniel, I didn't even remember his name, remember in the last video when we were talking, he actually got in touch with me because he saw the video, he saw the Table Talk episode, and he let me know that he's back from Japan, and that he's going to be uh, launching those dice, he calls them the Samurai Dice, on Kickstarter. I don't know exactly when, he kind of gave me the impression it was somewhat soon. I even said I would maybe shoot a separate video for him to use for that, just showing the dice up close in case you guys were interested and might want to pick some up. I know, you were kind of interested in them too, yeah, weren't you? they're lovely. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty good. Valok writes, Way back in the days of AD&D, we used to have a lot of superstitions about important die rolls. My favorite, though, was rubbing the die on the face you wanted to roll, usually the 20 on a d20, vigorously before chucking it. At some point, someone had done that and gotten a natural 20, and ever since then, we were convinced that a little friction would impart some magic to the roll. Those were fun times. I, I like this. I like this because there's a little bit of ceremony to it. You know what I mean? I, I don't care for the superstition part of it, but I like the idea that you're doing something, you know? And that's kind of cool. I, I was playing zombie side with a guy, and he would cock the die, like, before he rolled, he'd go like, Ch -ch -ch, and then oh, roll, you know what I mean? Because before he shot the gun or whatever, yeah. and I kind of liked, liked that little bit of flavor to it, right? I think there might even be a little slight amount of physics on it, too. It's where what? you're <laughs> The rubbing of the die? Well, yeah. like, let's say you use a D8. Well, if you want to roll a six, you definitely don't want it to land on the six. So by rubbing it, you're kind of smoothing it out, taking any dust or any debris off. So whenever it hits that six, it should just slide back over and keep rolling because there's no way it's going to land there. It's too smooth. Yo, 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 Rodney, this is how I roll, yeah? My favorite color of dice is green. My favorite type of dice is a D12. It rolls really well. My least favorite, a D4. It doesn't roll. My favorite use for dice is combat. My favorite system of dice combat, Dungeons and Dragons. The stronger the weapon, the stronger the dice you use. The more weapons you use, the more dice you roll. Although, I think this game is gonna replace it. Worst company for dice, Fantasy Flight. They never put enough in the box. Most prestigious dice. And my favorite dice is this one right here. This is Bob. Do you know how many portals to another dimension Bob has closed for me? Or how many heads he's decapitated from zombies? Wait a minute, you're not Bob. Bob? Bob? And my favorite method of rolling dice is... Yeah, dice towers. They don't roll off the table, they don't knock the components of the game everywhere. And the other good thing is, it is extremely rare to have a cocked or cassé dice. Although I'd love to have a bowling alley down the side of my table so I could throw my dice like crap style into like bonus zones. So there you go Rodney, that's how I roll. Peace out. Akagami Matsu writes, My favorite die is a round D6. It's basically a sphere that has something inside that makes it stop on one of the sides. That's pretty cool. That's really neat. Yeah, it is neat. That's exactly what Akagami says right here. It's really neat. And everybody I show it to is always very excited. Yeah. I don't think... Yeah, I've seen like a large, uh, like a D100. 
Yeah. That was a big circle. They're saying they have like gravel or something inside them. But speaking of which, you had kind of a roundish, cylindrical style die there. And we showed it in the Table Talk episode, but I meant to show a close-up of you spinning that, and I forgot to do that. So why don't you do that now so people get a sense of sort of how this thing works if they haven't seen it before. Yeah, it's a little difficult. James Nichols writes, Sometimes if I'm rolling a die and it leaves my hand by accident before I intended it to, then I scream, DOESN'T COUNT! as loud as I can before the die stops rolling. I like to make sure people know it was an unintentional roll and has the added bonus of terrifying everyone around me. I imagine it does, James. Uh, but I also, I sympathize with that. Mm. I hate that. I hate when I'm like warming up the dice, I'm getting ready to roll, but I'm not, you know, I haven't rolled yet, and then boom, the die pops out of there and scatters across the table. Especially when it's a bunch of dice, like a whole bunch of D6s, and like one or two just kind of dribble <laughs> yeah, out. That's right, right. What but. do you do about that? Uh, I find if it happens at my table, usually when people go to roll, if it's an accident, they kind of, oh, oh, right, right. As There's, if it's like, oh, you can tell. <laughs> they might not shout. Doesn't count. Yeah, they don't but they, shout. But they, they react, right? They react. But then, you know, you kind of have to enforce the reroll. Otherwise, you know, something like a 20 will come up and they'll be like, oh, 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 <laughs> that's my victory <laughs> dance. Yes, I got a 20 that I intended. Zach Groenwald. He has a specific way of rolling. He rolls underhand with backspin so that the Ooh. dice spin against the table. Like this. Yes, it also stops the dice from rolling too far. Yeah, look at that. I'll basically drop right on the spot. Let me try yeah. it again. <laughs> oh, Oops. you pulled a pep there. I did pull a pep. <laughs> yeah, I get that. It's sort of, if it's going this way, it shouldn't spin that way in theory. That might be a good, uh, good technique for you to try. Yeah. Not with that die. <laughs> Not with that die. <laughs> okay. Hey, Rodney. Kurt here, aka The Vitruvian Gamer. And I'd like to welcome you here at the place where I work every day to earn my money to buy board games. And this is the place where something magical happened just two weeks ago. I was walking down the aisles just right, like I'm doing right now and suddenly my eye caught something on the floor. What could this be? Right next to a washing machine I saw something small and red. My eyes focused. I went closer. And yes, unbelievable. It was this little red tie. Could this be any coincidence? I don't think so. I'm the only board gamer here at work. We work here with 60 people and we get over 2,000 visitors every day. And still, it was me, the board gamer here, who found this little die. So, since then, I had to call this my lucky die, my most special die, this little worn out D6. And I'm sure this will bring me lots of luck in the future. And I hope to see you all there. Bye-bye. Chris Strecker writes, There's a member of my Pathfinder group that rolls two D20s for each roll. They are two different colors, so you can easily tell them apart, but one is basically there to support the other one. I think it's kind of an emotional support, so the one D20 isn't lonely or something. <laughs> or maybe it's there to give an energy boost. Regardless, he's consistent about which one is the real role and which one is the support, so it's all in good fun. I just thought that was... I'd never heard of anyone doing that before. That's yeah, weird. yeah, that's kind of neat. And I mean, Chris, your friend might like uh, fifth edition because that's actually how advantage works. You roll the two that's dice, right. so you, you could keep you, either one, and you pick the, the better the one, better or one, if yeah. you had a disadvantage, or disadvantage the worse one. Yeah. Right, right. Oh, so so your they, friend might like that. He was ahead of the curve. He, apparently, he was already into D and D, and he didn't know it. Naval warfare writes: When it comes to dice, I follow three rules. One. I never roll another person's dice. Two, I never let another person roll my dice. And three, I attune new dice when I get them. Attuning is a simple process where I carry my new dice in my pocket for a couple of weeks. I've actually tested my rolling, and my average roll on a D6 is 4.8 if I followed each of these three steps. If not, it's a 2.6. Now, I know this is crazy. <laughs> I know this can't be true. But as I listen to his steps, I'm like, oh yeah, this makes sense. I started like, Oh, maybe there's something here. He started backing it up with numbers, but this is nonsense, right? Like, the only important thing I think is that you can only have three dice attuned at a time, as per fifth edition D and D rules. Is this another D and D? It's another D and D. Another, one. <laughs> Again, maybe you're ahead of your time. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Hi, we wanted to respond to Rodney's table talkback episode about dice. Yeah. What do you have to say about dice? A lot. Well, keep it under two minutes. Okay. <laughs> Um, love of dice came from role-playing games uh, way back in the day when Dungeons and Dragons came out. Uh, the first thing is I had to take dice from other games and make them unique, and that kind of started the first superstition, and that is I need unique dice. Okay. So if I go to a group and somebody else is taking out a 
set of dice that I have, I don't use that set of dice. Makes sense. Yeah. What's number two? Um, you don't roll your dice until you need to. Like the samurai would not draw their sword until they had to. Number three, if you do roll your dice when you don't need to and you roll a good roll, you've just wasted that roll. And good dice only have so many good rolls in them. I've heard that before. Yep, that's yeah. a big one. Okay. If you're rolling really, really badly, it means you have bad dice, you've used up all the good rolls, it's time to buy a new set. <laughs> <laughs> I see how that, yep. why we have so many sets now. That's right. Okay. Yep. So do you have any dice superstitions of your own? Well, the only thing is, the prettier the dice, the better they roll. For sure. Okay. And if, say, you're having a bad night with your dice, mm -hmm. you have to crack out your dice rolling move. Your dice rolling move. Yeah, I'll show you. So you get your dice and you have to do your secret dice dance. Okay. Are you, you're giving away your secret dice dance? No, no, each one of us inside has their own dice dance. Oh. So if you sit quietly with yourself and your dice, you shall discover your own unique, powerful dice dance. That was not bad at all. <laughs> Win Zetterberg writes, here's a rule. If you roll a die off the table, it's an automatic one or a zero, depending on the game. What do you think of that, Pep? Oh, that's a little harsh. I, I, think, think. I think your opinions would be more important here, because I think this would affect you more than it would me. A little bit. Why don't we go with Ranger Rob's idea here? Uh, one die off the table, re-roll them all. <laughs> that's also punishing. I just, I think it would help curb someone who has trouble Getting a die to land on a five by five foot surface, you know, it might help kind of curb that behavior. Yeah. So drastic, but I like it. Hello, Rodney. I'd like to share with you my favorite and least favorite dice. My favorite's very easy. It's from the game Ankhmore Pork, inspired by Terry Pratchett's Discworld, in which the number between seven and nine is considered unlucky. And therefore, this one has a 7A, which is why it's my favorite. Here is my least favorite, and I can show you why in a picture. A D6 goes from one to six, a D12 from one to 12. This pretends to be a D10, but it isn't. It's got one to nine, and then it's got this zero. What's that about? When you play a game like Pathfinder, for example, you roll a bunch of different dice and you add up the totals. If you see a 10, it counts as 10. If you see a zero, it also counts as 10. Rubbish, nonsense. And you might say, well, there's not enough room for two digits. I refute that thus. You may say, it's cosmetic. Does it really matter? Yes, it does. When I'm playing a game, uh, I'd rather have painted miniatures than cardboard tokens. I'd rather have poker chips than, than um, tiddlywinks. And, and if I'm playing Phantom Leader and I need to roll uh, three, seven or 10 to score one, two or three hits, when I roll a 10, I want to be able to roll a 10 and say, yes, I don't want to roll a zero and say, oh, oh yeah, that counts as 10. So come on, dice makers, get your act together. Produce some proper D10s. I just had a couple of thoughts on dice. Mainly D10s are okay, right? They are, you know, practically look the same. But um, I like these because they actually do have a 10 instead of a 0. So this is that's nice. And there's also something else that annoys me with, D, with D10s. So this is fine, but at least this one, it has the, look at that, the 1 and the 7 are just by one another and they look the same so that's annoying i don't like that i so i don't use these dice actually too much instead i will I, i'll use these dice whenever i can so when i do have an important die roll to make i really need to make it this is what i do watch i spin it like that and it can spin for ages i think it's fantastic and it's quite annoying and i do that but i mean if you do have an important spin that's what what you have so Oops, disregard that spin, it fell off the table. I also don't count that, of course. And it comes finally to a rest. Ah, this is one six. Yeah, and a four and a one. Ah, fantastic die roll. 
So that's the late night gamers take on dice. Hey Rodney, this is my follow up to your question about dice. This is my bag of lots of dice. Uh, regarding some differences in dice, I really like these rounded four siders. They work a lot better for rolling. Of course, they don't work for Kemet. Uh, these are my two 20-siders. One seemed to always roll high, one always seemed to roll low. So I always had these side-by-side -side when I was playing D20-based games. And then for my favorite dice, uh, these are my circa 1982 uh, first set of polyhedrals. The uh, the uh, 20 is pretty well, pretty well rounded on the corners. I don't really use them much anymore, but I just always have kept them around because they're my favorites. Thanks. Well, thanks again, guys, for all the great video contributions, the written responses. Hopefully you enjoyed our nonsense on the topic of dice rolling as well. That was fun. Uh, and it was fun having you, Pep. Thanks for, for joining me. That was great. Do I have to go under the table again? No, you don't have to go under the table. You can just you can go home. Please, please go home. It's a lot cheaper if I don't have to feed you. And until the next episode, everyone, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Watch It Play Table Talk Back. My name is Rodney Smith, and this is... Aaron Corrigan writes, My daughter totally believes in the mystic power of rolling the dice. We should restart. Okay. <laughs> Three, two, one. I was totally saying that looking over there. <laughs> are we recording? <laughs> we are. We are, old man. What was that? <laughs> I own us! <laughs> Way back in the days of AD&D, we used to have a lot of superstitions about important... <laughs> <laughs> Way back in the days of the old AD and Ds. That's well. That's that was in the eighties, okay, at least. Yeah, that's a while ago. I 70s. was a young lad. I was a young lad. No, you weren't. <laughs> it's five years old. That's pretty young. That's pretty young. Yeah. So maybe we'll just show you guys how this weird cylindrical rolly dice works. Yeah, let's do it now. <laughs> Not everyone plays D and D. You might lose. He plays Pathfinder. He does. <laughs> And Pathfinder doesn't do that. Three, two, one. Rolls two d20s for each roll. They are two different colors. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Naval Warfare writes, when it comes to dice, I make absolutely certain that my dice are my dice. This means a few things. One. <laughs> that was up. Three, two, one. Are we gonna cut after? Yes. I always so wait until after you counted the one before I ask my question. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't want to interrupt you. <laughs> naval where, wherefore, right? Wherefore, wherefore art thou, naval He's wherefore? He's like a werewolf in the navy. Wherefore. <laughs> naval where. <laughs> <laughs> naval warfare. <laughs> naval warfare. War. <laughs> I'm really drawing there. You know what I thought about naval warfare? Maybe he means belly buttons. Naval. Yeah. Naval the fighting warfare. Other. Could be. Win Zetter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Win. Oh, yeah. Sort of double Zetter. It's like, it's like Cheddarburg, but with Cheddarburg. a Z. With a Z? Zetterburg? Z. 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 <laughs> You're like an underground American, aren't you? I know. I don't like <laughs> double agents. I don't either. Oh. Oh, because I don't. Kindred. B, C, D. Why did we go Z suddenly? Oh, well, there's so many there, letters. There's like, there's like e, F, G, H, I. There's a lot between D yeah, and but, Z. Yeah, but there's. I know, that's a good point. That's a good I hadn't thought of that. No, I know that. I'm saying that those letters all have the same ending sound. Why did we switch it up for Z? I always like to. And people, people are like, it's Z, not Z. I'm like, oh, Z is in Zedbra? Yeah, right. No, that's wrong. I'm with you, Americans. I'm with you. Thanks for watching. <laughs>